Hey there, guys! Welcome back to Let's Play Braid. And why are you so slow, Tim? Anyway, so we are back. Oh, this is my hello, if I haven't said that already. So we are back in the world hesitance, world 6. And we are about to take on impassable foliage. Now, this is pretty much a clone of that one um, level in world. Okay, that's not good. The one world, I mean, level in world 3. That um, irreversible one where if you rewind, you're screwed. So yeah, while we wait, um, let's talk about something different. So how many of you have ever woken up so early that it was like night, you know, when you wake up, and then you get to see the sunrise? Like, how often do you get to see the sunrise? Like, actually, how often do you see it? Not very often, right? Like, I barely see it myself since I love my sleep. Hey, it's the, un you know, downstream music that I really love. Anyway, so all this is self- Tim, really. This is pretty self-explanatory, so yeah. Um, so today for my student group, I had to wake up like about 6.40ish or something. Now that's not a big deal, you may think, but you know. I mean, you know it's November, you know it's you know, almost winter. If you can see, like, if it's that dark in the morning like that, you know that is the end of the year, for sure. So yeah, um, <coughs> so yeah, I guess it's almost daylight savings times too, I guess, right? It is. Um, I, although I shouldn't be one to complain, I mean look at my dad, for work, almost every day for work, he wakes up at around 6 or something so that he can get to work, you know, on time, considering that work is about 40 minutes away from home and all. So, I guess which, you know, you think that's, you know, pretty crazy, but then again, you know, it's work life. And it's something to be, you know, respected too. Like, I respect my dad a lot. Especially these days. Especially, especially because I consider him as pretty much my only role model in life. Since I don't have a... Why did I do that? Why did I place the ring there? Why did I do that? Really now? That's not part of the puzzle, Tim. Anyway, so yeah. I consider my dad to be like a big role model in my life. Considering that I don't have a lot of role models in general. That's kinda of, that's kinda of because like I move around a lot. I moved around a lot, so like my life hasn't been very constant. Oh by the way, this is a clone of the one um very bitch puzzle in um World 4. Where it's like, you know, freeze the time so that the Goombas who are time immune can pass. Can pass. What the No! Well, that sucked. Here. What? That one will die. Okay. So yeah. Like I said, I've moved. I moved around a lot, so it's kind of hard for me to say what my hometown is since I don't really have one anymore. I mean, it's like we move around so much. It's like I can't relate to anything. So, and I'm kind of an independent person actually. So I don't see myself um, requesting the help of many people. So. That's why I don't really have a lot of people who I consider to be like role models or like those who guide me a lot. I mean, <coughs> that's kind of a bad thing, but at the same time, I'm pretty independent, so... That's how I kind of, you know, see myself as, I guess. Especially especially considering that I don't really have siblings, so... It's like... I have to do everything, you know, by myself. Oh, come on! Can you... Yeah. So... Like I said, like you know, my dad is my role model, and that's you know, in consider. So he's my role model in, in terms of like you know, I like guess career plans and like my, my academic interests, interests and all. Since we're both into you know science and engineering that kind of stuff, like you know, he would you know try to guide me to the right direction. There we go. That's how I get the puzzle. Now. Um. Sorry, why am I coughing all of a sudden? So yeah, like he would always like you know try to guide me in the right path, career-wise. Although I sometimes tend to like ignore his, you know, advice or help, even though I really shouldn't. It's just a rebellious thing inside of me, which is a bad thing, very bad thing. So yeah, that's how you get up here. You freeze time in order to double jump. Why? Because there's a star here. Ta da! There was a star here all along. Um, this is a bit too far. Place the ring about here. 
or here. I said here. Thank you. Now what you want to do is to double bounce on your Goomba. Or double bounce on two Goombas. So, um, you need to use the slow down time effect thingy. Okay. Good. No. That's not good. Basically, you're going to use the effects of, you know, the ring slowing down time in this area so that you can, you know, stall for time or control t it's like your only means of controlling time and I forgot to set my timer I'm gonna have a freaking long episode so yeah I mean I don't like my episodes being long especially for this LP because um, especially because um, like you know what let's do this no. No. That's not good. You know, let's go back to the um, cannon area. Okay, so I'd say let's have about twelve, about like let's have about twelve more minutes or ten more minutes of recording. That's my goal. How about that? Well, that's a shame. I feel like, you know, guess. Like, I don't like it if my braid episodes are too long, especially considering how, you know, that means the file sizes are larger, and it takes much more time to upload, and it takes a lot of time to render my videos, especially with Pinnacle Studios, because, and I use Pinnacle Studios instead of VideoPad, which I normally edit with. I mean, VideoPad is easier, or is this something I've gotten used, I've just gotten used to, since it's so user-friendly. And it's like easier to um, cut clips and all this stuff, but with Pinnacle Studios, like it's very finicky, and like I like guess cutting. Oh, I almost made it too. Like cutting clips. Uh, there we go. Yeah, cutting clips will like you know, kind of lead to like will kind of lead to like you know, desyncing sound or like it will you know make um, synchronizing some sound stuff you know suck. So yeah. So that's why I prefer to use, I mean, in general, if I use Pinnacle Studios, the file sizes would be large in general anyway, because, I mean, as you may notice, like, VideoPad kind of, the default output setting is, um, 640 by 480, but for Braid, for Pinnacle Studios, it's like, um, 720 by 480, so there's that consideration. So, anyway, back on topic. Um, here we are in elevator action, which is another third level in hesitance, of course. I mean, for this level, these puzzles are hard. However, like when I first played through this game, I found out that even though they were the hard puzzles, they were the ones that I could know what to do. And like in, you know, World 5, where I was like, you know, kind of confused about the whole shadow mechanic. So I was in a, I didn't know how to, you know, approach things, or like what to do, especially with the one- No, 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 no. Especially with the one puzzle with the key, I mean, where you have to like jump across the pit as you're, sh you know, and kill yourself, and then you rewind so that you can catch your shadow's key as, you know, he dies and he gives it to you. That's kind of one puzzle that stumped me. That's something I didn't really understand in hesitance. I mean, not hesitance, but time and decision. But here, I mean, the puzzles are hard, but I knew what you're supposed to do. It's just implementing them is very hard. Well, yeah. First, you have to implement, implement correctly. What you want to do is slow down these cannons, these cannons, so that they will be slow. The bullets will be slow. And you want all of these bullets on the way to be slow, so this is what you want to do. Make the elevator go down slowly so that they slow down the cannons they approach. And the last cannon will, you know, be slowed down, you know, near the end anyway, so because like, you know, that's where the elevator stops. This is why this level is called Elevator Action. Or is it? <laughs> Man, I just love how the music sounds when you slow it down time and you go closer to the time, you know, slow down time barrier. It just sounds so funny, like... Yeah. I mean, like, it also changes, like, the tone... Oh, I'm... Duh, I'm so, That's why I, Why do I have the key? Because I want to unlock a door, dumbass! But yeah, like, I like how, you know, the tempo of the song changes. I mean, normally you deal with like, you know, 
the song, you know, how it sounds backwards. Oh, by the way, this is the third part of Downstream, which you barely hear since... But yeah, the music is kind of... Downstream is kind of like in three sections. The more... Da, 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 the major part, and then there's the minor part, like... Da, 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 and this one just like the, the dance one like this goes like So our puzzle piece of interest is up there under in the top right corner. However, this elevator thing is time immune. So yeah. Oh shit. I wasn't supposed to do You're supposed to preserve the ring. Let's try this again. Yeah, so you know, the music goes like do da 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 Oh, come on. As I was talking about the music, like... Like how, like, you know, for here, the time... The music sounds like it's being slowed down. The tempo changes, and as a result, the pitch changes too. Especially if you're closer to the barrier of time, I guess. Where time slows down. So yeah, since we're time immune, you can... Up I hate you, time immunity. You are so unforgiving. I mean, because you're time immune, if you make a mistake, then your screw-ups are kind of unforgivable. I mean, they can't be, you know, forgiven because, you know, if you try to rewind, you can't because you're already, you know, you are immune to rewinding. So, so that's why, like, when you rewind time, the music sounds like, you know, it... Oh my god, I... Oh, I'm so stupid. <sighs> okay. I messed up. I'm supposed to put the ring here. So that the, it closed the cannon down. When I put it down there, like, the cannon wasn't within the barrier. So that um, it still shot at the normal speed. However, I want to shoot it. Make, I want to make it so that, you know, the bullets slow down. Because then I can, you know, uh, avoid these bullets. It's, and then get this puzzle piece. Voila! There, was that so hard? Jeez, you have to make everything so complicated. And as you can see, this song reset itself. Even though, like, downstream is in three parts, like, it eventually resets itself, you know, since it has a loop. Now, as I said before, the music isn't really video game music, but it's actually real music. You know, like, that's actually, like, you know, I like guess, used. It was, already, it was already composed, but it's being used for this game. And I guess with the whole three sections and all this stuff, I guess here it's so that you know you're not supposed to notice that you know it loops on itself awkwardly because like you know the song stops and then it starts again from the very beginning. So I guess that's why like you know this like most of the music in this, a lot of the music in this um, game are in sections so that you don't really notice the um, pause at at the end of the song when it goes like, goes back to the beginning because you know you kind of think that it's all in sections. So yeah, now here's a tricky one. Um, basically, send it this time immune thing so that you're time immune. Notice how the song doesn't rewind when you're, or go backwards when you're rewinding. And then, no! Okay, so, you want to be time immune. I said you want to be time immune. <laughs> Tim looks at his watch. Now rewind this, now rewind so that the ladder goes back up. In the way, uh, yeah, and then grab on, and then oh, come on! This is supposed to be this isn't supposed to be bad, I think. Basically, you want to catch the ladder as it falls down, and then all the thing is, you have to be time immune as it does so. There we go now. You want to jump into that platform, and then, yeah, do that stuff. So, um, we're going to take on the puzzle piece, I mean the star, here later on. So right now, we are in another castle. Huh. And it's this music. So here we are in possibly, in the last, possibly the last level of World 6. Will we find the princess? Let's find out. But first, place the ring here for about 10 seconds. 6, 7, Eight, nine, ten. Fifteen if you want to be safe. Two. Hey, look at the hats on the bottom. Like they're like the soldier hat, the Indian hat, the um look at the hats at the bottom of the screen. Yeah, anyway, so yeah. There's a reason why you want to, you know, place the ring there. 
No. Oh my god, this is so fast. What do we do? Slow down time. Oh, I don't think that was a good idea. No! Come on, time. Ah! Why screw it up? Okay, wait for it to fire first. Now, go. I'm sure it shouldn't, you know. I'm sure I haven't screwed up time itself, right? Now, stand here. And, well, first of all. Yeah, stand here. And rewind time a bit. Now, notice how the ring is. Oh, now the ring is there! Cool! That's because we placed the time in the ring there in the past. However, since we're time immune, we are stuck here. Now, let's pull the switch here. And then do some interception action. Now, watch this. This is so cool. The ring and the key fall down. And you have to catch them both. How? Like that. Like a boss. I mean, you automatically grab the key if you touch it, but you need to grab the ring too. So you grab it by pressing down in mid-air as it falls down to its death. That is so cool. If you mess up, you can always, you know, space and rewind. So, it's all cool. And there's, there we go. This is possibly our last puzzle piece. Yeah. We have collected all 60 puzzle pieces in the game. Congratulations. You've won. So let's go see the princess. And, oh, this is a very, you know beautiful bridge. And look at this. This is a very beautiful castle. It's... Oh my god, there's like statues like everywhere. And like headless people everywhere. With the hats and all. Let's go and see the princess. Princess, are you here? Is it Barney? It took you so long to get here. But at long last, I can tell you that the princess must be in another... What? What? She's not here either? What? I've never met her. Are you sure she exists? Huh? What are, you supposed, what are you supposed to mean by that? Are you sure she exists? Of course, like, there's a princess, right? Right? Anyway, I want you guys to think about this dialogue for a long time. I want you to think about this. Why could we find a princess? Is it because there was no princess to begin with? That's a question to ask yourself. So yeah. Um, now I'm gonna... Um, if you excuse me, I'm going to... Make this puzzle. There we go. This is our puzzle. Let's see. It appears to be a city. A very metro, you know, metro metropolitan city, full of people. It, it appears to be winter. And there's a trash can with the ring. Oh my god, said ring. The ring that slows on time. Now here's some details to observe. What does this remind you of? The hat and this blue suit and like the white hair and the stars. What does that remind you of? Like this is another hint. Look what the finger's doing. Anyway, so. This appears to be Tim. What could this mean, though? And also, wanted, I want you to, to think when and where this is, because it kind of goes into detail about, I guess, the setting of this game, or maybe the setting of our story. Okay, so we've completed World 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and we found out that at the end, the princess was not at the castle. She might be in another one, or she might not be real. Where can we go now? Like, what's the answer? What are we supposed to do? Huh? Are we supposed to go to the bathroom? Well, that does nothing. Well, if we re are we supposed to go outside? Is our answer... Is the answer to our problems outside? No, but I see our five stars that we've collected. I'll collect the sixth one um, in the next episode. Maybe it's... Our answer is back here. And what is this city? Is it on fire? Actually, no. It looks, it's actually a city in lights, you know, since, you know, lights pollute the air. And it seems to be only, like, one of those impressionist paintings. Or, like, not impressionist, but, like, one of those paintings where, like, you know, it's all Monet, that kind of stuff. And what is this building? There's so many questions that we are left still unanswered. But I think we've completed the game, haven't we? Well, minus the stars. Like, we have three more stars to get. But where do we go from here? We'll find out in the next episode. So... I'll see you then.
Goodbye.